All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen and non-binary pals. This is another edition of Super Metroid A Link to the Past Combo Randomizer Co-op Tournament 2021. That is a mouthful. Uh, we got uh, two fantastic teams today. We got Aussie and Solsky versus Apathiduck and a Real Cutie. Uh, this is going to be a pretty intense match. These are all really high-level uh, players, so... Uh, Let's see how this shakes out. We got a lot of potential for trolling. We had an incredibly trolly seed last night. We'll see how this one goes. So I know uh, Oski and Solsky are veteran Link to the Past uh, Super Metroid combo rando uh, competitors they uh they were they were both uh really top level performers in, in the past couple of tournaments uh solo tournaments so uh that's uh that's going to be really exciting and on apathy duck and the real cutie side they're uh they're longtime speedrunners as well and i know they've been uh they've been practicing some tricks a bit some learning some new things or uh, uh, refreshing some old things that they weren't entirely sure uh, would be required. We had a suitless Meridia uh, speed uh, recently that uh, that they were kind of worried about. They found out that suitless shack tool could potentially be in logic. That's something that's on their minds. But they, they made sure to uh, coordinate practice on that I saw recently so hopefully they'll be up to the challenge today and then hopefully the seed gives them a challenge it's been kind of dry in terms of logic uh, at the start of the tournament but it seems to be picking up and we are off first thing we're gonna see here is probably a couple of the players will be a moon falling down towards the morph ball area it looks like Aussie and the real cutie are going to be on their way down. So moonwalk is a feature in the game where if you're uh, holding the shoot button, you can walk backwards. So you're always aiming the same direction and you just kind of slowly walk backwards. But a quirk with this is if you jump for one frame backwards, it cancels your spin and just uh, if you, well, n not necessarily cancels your spin. It uh, it uncaps your fall speed uh, for some reason, and uh, it uh, it's pretty easily set upable by holding in the angle button. And when you're holding an angle button and you try to turn around and jump, you just you only get one frame of jump. We got a grapple in the ceiling. Uh, looks like a real cutie didn't get it first try and just bails on it. Aussie takes. A few tries and does wind up getting it and wants to keep it. It could be useful later on getting into the wreck ship. It's just easier. But all of these players can definitely get into the wreck ship of their own accord with just a continuous wall jump, or maybe even if they have bombs, they could bomb jump across. It's no biggie for them. But it's nice to have the grapple. It is a fast movement item. We got some money at Sanctuary. It's nice to have. Uh, Dropping now, we got gravity suit in uh, in the thieves hideout. I'm especially interested to see how these players route. Uh, now, uh, a route I I personally like. Uh, it looks like real cutie is going for it. They're going to uncle pretty much right away. I believe. I believe Solsky went to Uncle immediately, which I'm not super keen on. If you're going into a link to the past first, like I like the play to do that, but I would prefer it if the player that's further behind does it instead. I I would like to know what the tree pulls are. We got silver arrows from the Uncle, so that's nice, but that's not gonna be progression for them. They won't be able to do the escape right here, right now. Unless they uh, they get the right tree pull and it happens to be bombs. And Aussie is just opting, opting to buy bombs instead. 
looks like they're going to be on their way to the eastern area first. That's an interesting play. That's something a lot of players typically put off for a while, but if you want to put off Kakariko until you have like a bottle or bombs or money, this is a pretty smart play. Especially since they got a hundred bucks in Link's house. It might have been three hundred bucks. I think it was three hundred bucks. Kakariko typically is pretty loaded, but so is the eastern. Well, the eastern area usually has something. Unfortunately, it doesn't pay off for Aussie this time. Just a couple of E tanks and unfortunately a shield. It is nice to have money early on. It's pretty common that you find enough money for not only the bottle vendor, but also a bomb refill on your way out of Kakariko. So a lot of players will uh, opt for uh, checking Hulahan or getting the rupees from the Hulahan room just right at the start of the seeds. But it's very rare to be required. And even if it's required, 90% of the time you'll get to do it later anyway, so I'm not a fan of it, but it, it's a valid play But in this seat is it's looking absolutely not required Not much in the dam just a bug net and So far not much in Kakariko either. We got a map check We got a red crystal and Tower of Hera and two blue crystals elsewhere. We do have a book from the well, though. That's interesting. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> so, Appy the Duck, uh, being partnered with the real QD, has been informed that the south of Kakariko is junk and is just going, just saving quitting out immediately and going into uh, what looks like the mini Moldorm play. Uh, saving the dam for later. Going to be coupling that with the desert. Makes a lot of sense. And we got Mushroom and X-Ray Mini Moldarm. Along with some ammo and Mirror. That's that's a nice find as well. It's going to come into play a little bit later. A little tight on bombs here for Apathy Duck. Only has five. Needs to nail a few hits. Ha can afford to miss a couple, but does get them down with one remaining we'll be able to get ice rod cave out uh, without an issue but will they oh was that wave beam in blind that would be nice if so I didn't think it was It was. Okay. And it looks like just junk in uh, Ice Rod Cave. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had looked back at the restream, and I saw... I think I must have seen three of the chests opened. And I was like, oh, I saw them all. So that'll happen. These crabs are vicious, even on two hearts. They do do two hearts of damage. <laughs> Do. Uh, so Ice Rod Cave for Apathy Duck uh, Arc is actually going to oh, okay, going to get their gravity suit and a little bit of ammo, that's nice early game for sure and Solsky on their way to check desert Apathy Duck is likely on their way south yeah, going down to the dam and the desert play right behind Solsky no, actually. Okay, since they found the mushroom, they just save and quit, so they are going to turn that into the witch. See what it is, and if it's nothing, they already saved, they could just reset and get their mushroom back. That's, that's a solid play. It does cost a bit of time if it's nothing and they do have to reset, because that uh, resetting will take them back to their ship in Super Metroid. So this is a single game, 
is Super Metroid and A Link to the Past smashed into one. Apathy Duck is keeping that heart piece. I'm surprised by that. Maybe they just don't want to uh, start back at the ship again. The nice thing about, like, the best thing about keeping the mushroom is, uh, is actually to be able to potentially do fake powder later on if they're unable to find the real powder and, and if they have the Samaria. But it would be, it sure would be nice just to have the ability to use fake powder at any time if they're in a pinch and have anti-fairies around. Get some fairies, get some health refills. So, Desert looks to not be boots locked today. We got a vanilla big key and a, a small key in the map chest. And we got quite a bit of supers. That's nice to see. Uh, potentially, they're not going to need charge beam necessarily, but we'll see if it... Uh, find this way into their inventory anytime soon. I don't know how much they're at, like maybe 20 supers by now. And this is sphere one, so that's promising. So unfortunately, the players will not be able to beat the Desert Palace today. Or, uh, well, right now. They'll have to wait till tomorrow, sorry. A Morph Ball on the Desert Ledge, though. That's pretty huge. That's uh, Both teams will have that, so it's not going to give one particular team an, a significant advantage. But I'm thinking a real cutie is probably going to be diving in uh, to diving into uh, Super Metroid after this. I do like this play by Apathy Duck to uh, to uh, check out the castle with their 10 bombs. There are some pretty good setups to get these guards uh, dispatched with bombs. Uh, it takes 5 bombs minimum. Uh, if you're just kind of learning to use bombs through the castle, it could take like 7 bombs or so. It's so easy to miss if you don't have the, uh, the patterns kind of memorized and like exactly where to place the bombs kind of where and when I suppose if you don't have that muscle memory they kind of get a little uh, squirrely is able to get this uh, chest in Zelda's spell this is actually out of logic without a small key from the dungeon so uh, they could have opted to take the key from early on, either from the map chest room guard or the boomerang chest room guard. Uh, they could have taken that and done dark cross and possibly the back of escape. But without lamp, it, it's kind of hard to rationalize. It's kind of a long trip and an even longer trip if you can't see. I do like the play just to go straight to the Zelda cell. You're gonna have that in logic eventually, and you're just you're in that part of escape already. Might as well just get it out of the way. Looks like Misery Meyer is gonna be green pendant. A little surprised they are talking to Suracha to get that information. You could just wait until you have until you go through a dark world portal and then check the map, and then you could see all of the crystals and pendants. But now they know Meyer is a pendant for sure. And now they know they don't have to look at that part of the map when they check the map later on, I suppose. 
I guess. Gotta find some bright side. So yeah, as predicted, uh, a real cutie and Solsky. Um, well, it's not that surprising. Uh, Solsky being here in Super Metroid, uh, they are uh, more a link to the past mains. But uh, Aussie definitely was a high level uh, Super Metroid player. Uh, probably the Super Metroid side of their team, pretty much. So it's a little surprising to see Solsky here first, but at the same time, they are the ones who found the Morph Ball, and Spear 1 was already pretty much full cleared, so there's not, not much else to do. I just gotta keep going. And surprising to see a real QD actually taking the time to get a shield. Going a little bit out of their way, like entire seconds out of their way to get shield. Is that Kane of Burna, I think, in early supers? Yeah, as chat points out, you got a problem with shield. Yeah, when you have the shield, you have a problem. That is correct. At least I, I, I read it that way. They didn't put a question mark on the end, so that must have been what they meant. Surely, like, there's no other sensible uh, way to interpret that. But yeah, Apathy Duck and Aussie both getting their Morph Ball. Oh, this is, this is interesting. So Aussie actually hadn't turned in the Mushroom quite yet. Uh, is doing that now because now they have Morph Ball. So as soon as they save scum the Mushroom... As soon as they see what the mushroom is going to get them, they can nope out of it and just go immediately into their Super Metroid checks. That's really nice, really convenient for them. There is a benefit to just not having the mushroom anymore. They will be able to just uh, ignore the powder check until they actually get powder. Because just draining your magic does take a while. Uh, so, uh, they won't even be considering that anymore. They won't be going out of their way to check the magic bat. So, it's just, uh, it's time savings for an out of, for skipping an out of logic check anyway. It's nice. So, it was a surprising play, but it's not a bad play. Of course, I, I'd be hard pressed to to call anything these players do a bad play, other than picking up that shield earlier. And we got Moon Pearl over in uh, the big pink area, right behind Spore Spawn. We don't have Dark World access yet. We still need. Uh, wait. Yeah, yeah, we still need Ice Beam or Speed Booster to get Dark World access and flippers. Uh, but we do have a glove, okay. So they could just get a hammer anyway. Or another glove. Imagine having mitts and or a hammer to get Dark World access. That would be wild. That would be such a free seed. I don't even know if that's legal. Uh, we are gonna be getting a check on the Billy Mays area from Apathy Duck. I'm marginally surprised by this. I feel like Ark could uh, do that check instead, while uh, Apathy Duck could go down Red Tower or something, but uh, they probably want to finish in wrecked ship. That, that kind of makes sense. Just 
since they're able to do wreck chip right now. Oh yeah, also knowing that grapple beam is there, I guess they would want that before going into wreck ship, like going in the direction of wreck ship anyway. Getting a blue boomerang. Weren't quite able to get the damage boost immediately from the Rio. Uh, I think that's a Rio. The little ceiling hopper. So they're just gonna put it off until uh, room reload. That makes sense. You kind of get two opportunities to do the damage boost into the ceiling item. The E-Tank item. And then after that, the uh, the Rio just gets too far away. Just gets out of position and it's uh, it takes longer to set up. As evidence here. Dang. Yeah, they're going to have to reload the room and come back just to make it a, a bit easier. Solsky does manage to get it. There we go. Pappy the Duck gets it. Not too much time lost. They were able to minimize that by uh, choosing to do other things instead of reloading the room immediately. That was pretty smart. Basically, in either one of these games, you're going to lose time. And minimizing time loss is uh, a pretty, pretty high level... Uh, strategy or pretty high level thinking high level skill of course like if you're a top player you just shouldn't make mistakes at all in the first place and then you wouldn't have to adapt just You know, just don't mess up. Easy. Uh, so we got a wave gate coming up on Apple the Duck. They, they got their Moon Pearl. I, no, they didn't get their Moon Pearl yet. They're doing this first for... Oh, more Fall Alarms. I missed that earlier. That's nice. I like that uh, Morph Ball Bounce strat. Uh, through the spikes for, from a real cutie. I gotta... Yeah, I really gotta look into these individual room strats. Uh, just going through room by room, you can save so much time over just winging it. Like, several seconds per room is a pretty big deal to just learn how to move. It is the case in A Link to the Past, but it's especially the case in Super Metroid because of how variable the movement speed is. If, you, if you're if you able to maintain speed as much as you can, then uh, you save several seconds, whereas Link to the Past, you typically save a second or two. Got some, uh, got some blueberries in the. Oh, interesting. Aussie is taking the time to get those bombs. Uh, they were, I believe, they were pretty low. Uh, I forget what they did last in a link to the past, but it's nice to have that refill. Um, we did get a continuous wall jump from, uh, from Ark. That's nice. That's a pretty tough one. Was that a was that a first try one? Because that's that's pretty tough to do when the missile's there. You have to wait for the text to disappear and then jump. That's yeah, that's great. 
I don't recall if I've ever personally pulled that off first try. And Aussie showing off, you can wall jump off of moving trippers to get up on top of them and very quickly gets that missiles in the sky. It's pretty tough to wall jump off the trippers because they, uh, they do kind of move through you when you're trying to wall jump off them. So you have to wall jump away from them. You do have a seven pixel range in which you can wall jump off of them. So you just kind of need to space yourself away from them as they're moving towards you. And unfortunately, without the Varia suit, these spikes do 60 damage per hit. So they're making use of that grapple to get across the bowling alley. We got a solid fan tune fight from the real cutie as well. I assume Aussie had a good fight too. A lot of these kinds of things can just be assumed. Yeah, there's a little bit to be said for uh, being a solid Super Metroid runner or being a solid a Link to the Past runner. But on top of that, uh, just being a speedrunner in general, a lot of it's, it's a totally different mentality from just like maining one game or another. And like when a speedrunner just plays a game, they're going to learn so much about it they just want to learn they want to absorb all this knowledge so uh they do tend to get good at both games and and these are the the kind of runners these are the kind of players these are so i believe apathy duck is a link to the past main and Ark is a Super Metroid main, but at the same time, they learn the crap out of both games. We got an eggplant going for a walk on the water. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, so items can be vanilla in this game. It's possible. Those flippers logically required a glove to get. Uh, a lot of people are like, you need the flippers to get this. Uh, well, not a lot of people. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard from people before that you need the flippers to get to Zora. Uh, that's, that's not how you get there in vanilla. But that's how you got there here. Just uh, pretended to have flippers. As they say, fake it till you make it. And now with those flippers, they can uh, ignore all the checks they just did because they already did them. But it will give them access to Swamp Palace in the future, along with that mirror. So that is probably important. That's a really good find. Eventual importance. That's a... It's still a big play, even though it's not immediately... Uh, fruitful. And on top of just uh, giving them Swamp Palace access. It will also inform their decisions in the future. If, they, if they're thinking, should I go to Ice Palace? Should I avoid it? Now they know flippers are available in Logic. So it, it's not going to necessarily deter them from going into Ice in the future.
And depending on whether uh, Swamp is a uh, pennant or crystal, uh, Aussie may just opt not to even bother getting it. Cutie does manage to infinite bomb jump, check the missiles in the sky. They're satisfied with that uh, being nothing. Screw attack at croc escape is nice. It's not very nice. It's nice, but I don't know if the players will actually bother getting that. We'll see. I I suppose Solsky and Apathy Duck might. Like, it's a very helpful item in uh, both Lower Norfare and Meridia. But uh, if you're a Super Metroid main and you've been playing it for a long time, been speedrunning it for a long time, you might just not even bother with Screw Attack at all. So Duck is up in the mountain, um, potentially going to check the Dark World map. We'll find out. I always forget to check maps, so I wouldn't be surprised if they don't check it at all. Hmm. They are opting to go out of the way for these super missiles. Somewhat surprising. Oh, it's an E-Tank, sorry. Uh, E-Tank, uh, whereas QD has four E-Tanks and a reserve. It's, uh... I'm not sure how much Duck has, but they may have skipped a few. Duck was on five? Okay. Okay, Duck is going into the Dark World portal. And we do get a map check. Left side is Pendants. Uh, as we know, Green Pendant is Mire. I take it... Uh, I want to say Ice? I don't know which one was red. I shouldn't say if I don't know. <laughs> oh, Swamp was red. Alright, we got Solsky checking that as well. Nice. So Swamp Palace is required. They are going to need those flippers, and Aussie knows where they are. That's pretty huge for them. Like, it's not as huge as gambling Agana or uh, Aganim for Dark World access and being right. But... It is, uh, it's advanced knowledge. Uh, it's gonna enable them to route, uh, with intent. And that may prove enough of an advantage, uh, to get them, uh, some time savings over, uh, Team Corndog. So I would give a very slight edge to, uh, Crockpot right now. Although by the looks of it, Duck has done Kraid, and it seems Solsky, uh, I suppose Solsky may have put it off, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, duck getting that bomb jump. That's a that's a pretty tough one when you don't have a sword. There's a setup you can do by doing a sword spin as you're slipping off the edge so that the sword spin won't come out until you the first frame you're on the ledge. Uh, meanwhile, we get a bottle and a bombless medallion in the watering hole on Aussie's side. But yeah, this is a pretty dangerous bomb jump. A lot of people, uh, I wouldn't say people struggle with it, but it's it's annoying to to fail it since you fall down two floors if you fall in. And I presume we're going to be getting, uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to be getting a, uh, yeah, we're getting a, a snail clip from Aussie. You can do it from the side he was trying to do it there, uh, but it is still pixel perfect, so he effectively gets three tries, whereas most people just wait until the second opportunity and only get two tries. I would presume it's the same visual cue as well, since the uh, the tiles are just like pretty much the same tile. I'll see checking right side pit first while Solsky is. Uh, doing trade and duck is on their way to Meridia, I presume. A little bit surprised Aussie is taking these super missiles and just uh, leaving. And with gravity and uh, and grapple beam, actually bothering to check. The uh, check tool. So they're doing a gravity jump here. There's there's a bit of a trick to jumping out of sand here. So uh, whenever you're uh, whenever you're jumping, like you have a certain height, of course, because you have a hitbox. So whenever you aim down or whenever you spin, your hitbox is actually shorter, and it. It's, it retracts upwards, so when you spin jump out of sand, you're actually uh, getting out of sand immediately, as opposed to uh, as opposed to straight jumping out. Well, sort of. Uh, if you if you do cancel your spin uh, before you land in the sand, you land sooner, so you're higher up. But if you do if you're spinning when you land, you actually land deeper in the sand so it's harder to jump out so what they do is they hold an angle button and then they land in the sand and then they do a spin jump and that pretty much guarantees they get max speed coming out of the sand and even more tricky is uh, you can tap forward and and then jump and that'll give you a spin jump but you'll be spin jumping in place so that uh, lets them just, they can immediately get full speed out of the sand directly up into the hole without having to adjust for it or anything. And Apathy Duck just having a blast with this grapple beam. Doing a grapple jump to get up to these, uh, these blocks. So... A uh, quirky property with the grapple beam is when you're flying in the air and then you morph and unmorph, the game just uh, puts you on ground or something in a grounded state. Aussie actually getting a, a sword in the left sand pit as well. It's nice. Right. They must have reset Shack Tool. They must have not found anything there.
sword is definitely pretty important, considering they didn't have one to begin with. Ice Beam in the big chest of Eastern. That's a nice find. Although, uh... Huh. They're, they're coming in here without the bow. Which, I, they kind of have to. They're running low on checks. They haven't actually checked Zora. That's... Uh, they have the money to do so. They have 800 rupees, I believe. Yeah, it looks like two rupees on the on the uh, commentary feed, but uh, this is eight hundred. So they could get get those flippers right now, but even flippers wouldn't really get them anything necessarily. And Solsky as well is going into uh, into Eastern. So with Ice Beam, they, they have total access to the back of Meridia. They can go through either the back door with the flippers uh, through the uh, the Dark Ice Rock Cave area. There's a portal there that gets them to the back door of Meridia. Uh, alternatively, they could just go through the front and fight Batun by uh, clipping off of a mock droid, a frozen mock droid. Happy the Duck struggling a bit with a snail clip. I think it was probably a pixel too low. So this is a... This is kind of a... A mildly rude seed. Probably about as much as, almost as much as you could ask out of it. Already having gravity is uh, pretty much free for these runners. They they don't need gravity, but it sure is nice to have. I do wonder, knowing that the that the uh, that the ice beam is available in Eastern, and Apatheduck being in Meridia, I wonder if they know. Oh well, I was gonna say I wonder if they know the Crystal Flash clip, but unfortunately, they uh, they don't have enough power bombs for that. Uh, as you can see on Apathy Duck's screen, they're they're trying real hard to uh, uh, get out of the sand, and it's just not very consistent. Uh, they, I think they were trying to hold down as they were jumping. That will get them instantly out of the sand. That's nice. But if you're unmorphing a bit late, and you're in the unmorph animation, you could potentially... Uh, lose collision and like not uh not land in the sand until later and kind of get stuck down there making it a bit more difficult to bomb jump but they do eventually get up I wonder if they reset uh, I want to say, see what's that shack tool. Probably. Like, even if you want to keep the sword immediately and just leave, it would probably be faster to reset and get the sword again.
even more money. Uh, so they're they're definitely not hurting for money. Uh, Solsky doing a hell run in, here in Upper Norfair. This makes a lot of sense with five E tanks. In hard logic, you can be expected to go into Bubble Mountain area uh, without Varia with, I believe, four E tanks. Uh, I want to say it's five to get out. I'm not sure. Uh, but they do find another sword here in, in the start of Bubble Mountain. Unfortunately, it appears Aussie is having, I don't know if it's controller issues or emulator issues or what. Looks like they're taking a moment to fix things. Oh, power issues, that's awful. Oh, I take it they're on Super NT, that makes sense. If it's a power supply issue, that's... That's kind of bad. I'm not seeing anything in the race chat. Maybe I'm not scrolled down far enough. And the dead rock is showing some power to Apathy Duck. Uh, Ark finds those flippers as well. There must be some kind of communication if Apathy Duck is pausing for so long. I see. Okay. I didn't see anything in the race time chat because I'm in the wrong chat. <laughs> that would make sense. Oh, I see. It looks like they are going to be rescheduling. Thank you. 
Yeah, I, I don't know if they're. Yeah, they're just. Uh, Aussie's just having some power issues. It it just keeps uh, flickering out on him. And you know, just it reset on him three times. That's not really an unfortunate way to lose a seed. Uh, after the duck and a real cutie are going to be uh, are going to be continuing the seed on their own. But unfortunately, it looks like this particular uh, race is uh, has come to a close. They've all forfeited already. So sorry about that, folks. Hopefully we can bring you another race soon. We do have another race going on at the moment. So, yeah. Uh, I believe the other race is on Speed Gaming 2. So we'll see about getting on there. Or getting a uh, raid going to there. And thanks you all for stopping by. Thanks to our trackers today. Uh, Hydro Power and Sanders. Uh, thanks to our racers, of course. Give, and, give everyone a follow. I've been Jagger G, and I think we're probably going to be closing this one out. 